May I help you? A dry martini. Shaken, not stout. Bond is an international man of mystery, taste, and poise. I mean, who wouldn't want to be him? Or control him in a video game? From his humble beginnings in the unofficial Shaken Not Stirred text adventure game to the game we all know the best, GoldenEye 007, Bond has had almost as many successes and failures on the console as he has had in the box office. But of course, that's not counting quite possibly the weirdest James Bond game ever. The one starring the real Sean Connery from Russia with Love. Who are you? The name is Bond. James Bond. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming if you haven't done so already. In arguably the N64's GoldenEye 007, produced by Rare, was the zenith of James Bond's video game supremacy. The game featured a truly revolutionary multiplayer mode, thrilling central campaign, and codified many of the standards we evaluate first-person shooters by today. Despite being a smash success and arguably the defining game for the N64 console, the Bond license was handed over from Rare to Electronic Arts in 1999 with the release of solid but forgettable adaptations of Tomorrow Never Dies and The World Is Not Enough. Even though EA had produced one of the best Bond games ever in their follow-up Everything or Nothing, the franchise quickly found itself under a lot of pressure to shake things up. After a failed attempt to recapture the dizzying heights of GoldenEye's success in GoldenEye Rogue Agent, EA was at an impasse. There were no more Brosnan-era films to adapt into video game properties, so what did they do? They embraced another tradition of the Bond franchise, returning to the past. We'll do this again some other time soon. EA decided to make a game based off of arguably the most critically beloved of the Connery-era Bond films, From Russia With Love. The second film in the Bond theatrical franchise sees our stalwart 00 being assigned a mission to help a Russian spy in possession of a code-breaking device escape the Soviet Union's clutches and immigrate to the West. The film features international espionage, high-stakes adventure, unforgettable action sequences, and a memorable turn for Robert Shaw as the villainous Red Grant. I get a kick out of watching the great James Bond if I know what a bloody fool he's been making of himself. It's a beloved classic. However, would modern audiences embrace a video game tie-in from almost 40 years prior? They would if it featured Sean Connery. I'm going in. That's right. Much like the other EA-era Bond games, this game features the actual Bond actors and other reputable movie stars in the respective roles. In fact, Everything or Nothing's arguably more stacked than Brosnan's actual final cinematic outing, Die Another Day. Everything or Nothing boasts Willem Dafoe, Heidi Klum, Richard Keel reprising his role as Jaws, Shannon Elizabeth, and Dame Judi Dench reprising her role as M. With Everything or Nothing being the model for success, the team behind From Russia with Love, led by writer Bruce Fierstein and directors Stephen Barry and Michael Condry, knew there was only one way to make this game work. They needed Sean Connery. No substitutes, and against all odds, the reclusive and curmudgeonly actor who literally swore he would never play Bond again, twice before. I've said it, never again. <laughs> no, no, I won't do any more, no, I'm finished, no came back again. Two factors led to his return. Number one, From Russia With Love was his favorite Bond film. And number two, his grandchildren were avid video game enthusiasts. The fact that he was able to record all his dialogue from his home in the Bahamas probably didn't hurt either. When asked about his return at the time, he's quoted as saying, As an artist, I see this as another way to explore the creative process. Video games are an extremely popular form of entertainment today, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it all fits together. With Connery being the only surviving cast member of the principal characters, the rest of the beloved Bond support structure, M, Rosa Klebb, and Q, are all portrayed by voice impressionists, while digitally modeled to look like the actors who played them in the previous films. The two major deviations from the filmic canon that occur in From Russia With Love are the inclusions of Natasha Bedingfield's Elizabeth Starr, a character that had previously appeared in GoldenEye Rogue Agent, and the addition of starlet Maria Menounos as the evil henchwoman Eva. The plot of From Russia With Love is essentially, well, the movie, only amped up and more action. A new exciting prologue sequence where Bond must go to the Houses of Parliament in order to save the Prime Minister's daughter, use a jetpack, and fly around fighting goons opens the game with a bang. Hardcore Bond fans will know that despite the inclusion of the jetpack and the Aston Martin in the game, Bond does not have either of these in the film. This opening sequence sets the game up to not only be a great Bond game, but also a great Bond adventure. While it's obviously significantly more action-packed than the usual fare of the 60s Bond films, it is a fantastic opening. It sets the game up to feel more like the greatest unmade Bond movie than an adaptation of From Russia With Love. Oh! 
Too bad. The game is over, Mr. Bond. From here, the game reverts back to the film's story. The MI6 mission debrief, the spy who's got the Lecter device, and Bond being sent on a mission. The few notable changes that the game makes to Bond canon and the film's overall aesthetic are 1. The serum gun. Yes, that's right. In From Russia With Love, Bond shoots his enemies with a toxic serum that makes them fight each other. It's bizarre. 2. The game was produced in a legally gray area where, due to a long protracted lawsuit, the Bond franchise rights holders could not use Blofeld, Bond's arch enemy, Spectre, the secret organization that he fights against in the first seven or so films, or anything related to them. Therefore, instead of Spectre, he fights Octopus in the game. Despite some minor changes, the only meaningful deviation from the film is its final level. It acts almost as a coda to the whole story, with Bond on a revenge mission invading a Spectre We believe it's the Octopus secret base. Well, Octopus controlled island. There he has a showdown with Red Grant, now piloting a large mechanical octopus device. It's almost a perfect Bond short film. Ultimately, the game received mixed or fairly positive reviews. It's fairly well regarded within the Bond gaming subculture, with most hardcore Bond gaming fans preferring both Goldeneye or Everything or Nothing, but respecting the novelty of doing a non-contemporary Bond adventure. However, this in some ways feels like a missed opportunity. The game feels like it was hurt from major crossover potential in the way that Goldeneye had because it's so rooted in the film it's based on. If the game had been differentiated even more and taken an everything or nothing approach, telling a new story with Connery as Bond, it could have been a real hit for EA. The other aspect that might have held the game back from breaking out more is the fact that it's third person. Goldeneye, what most casual fans think of when they think of Bond games, was the quintessential first person shooter. Transitioning over time to a third person shooter has positives and negatives. It makes the game feel more cinematic and allowed EA to capitalize off of scanning both Pierce Brosnan and replicating Connery's mid 60s look. But it also made it less experiential. Should From Russia With Love have just been another Connery era mission? A game inspired by From Russia With Love, but not so directly based on a literal interpretation of the movie? Possibly. It would have cleaned up the clunky sections in the middle of the game where you're going from scene from the film to scene from the film. It would have helped make the game more of a novelty, in a good way, and it would have potentially drawn new fans in who were curious to investigate what was so special about this game that it got the Sean Connery back to play Bond. However, it didn't. And aside from the memories of hardcore Bond fans, the game has slowly drifted into obscurity. This also could be attributed to just how bizarrely the game was marketed, with a trailer that's ostensibly just Q berating Bond. Follow me, 007, and try not to break anything. It doesn't really sell you on the fact that it's a new Connery starring from Russia with Love adaptation at all. To say nothing of the fact that the print ads at this time were even worse. The fact that the game isn't better remembered just off of Connery's involvement alone is slightly perplexing, but you know, that might be why From Russia With Love is the weirdest James Bond game no one remembers. Well, I hope I haven't disappointed you. That's it for this one. What do you think? Do you remember From Russia With Love? Let us know your thoughts down below, and as always, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one from Nerdstalgia Gaming.